Hi everyone, and welcome to the Jesuit Institute. Since COVID began in the year 2020 from April, we have consistently tried to record and offer you a Mass, and now in recent times, this encounter with the Word on Sundays. But after considering everything that we need to consider at the Jesuit Institute, our vision and mission, and also knowing that many things are on offer, we have decided that from the beginning of Advent in 2023, we will no longer be putting out this Sunday devotion. Now, I understand for some of you, this may be disappointing. On the other hand, there is so much that is on offer. You've been invited to return to your parishes. I know for some people that may be difficult. But on the internet, there is an abundance of offerings. And so we invite you not to feel abandoned, but perhaps to look and to see what else may be helpful to you and your growth in the Spirit as you continue to journey with the Lord. And so, on the Feast of Christ the King, we will bring these encounters with the Word to an end. I invite you most especially, if you can, to return to your faith community, to be part of your faith community. And if you can't do that, to look for other options that will be helpful to you. I want to also thank you for your support over the years that we have done this. We have had so many encounters with new people because of these weekly broadcasts. So thank you for your support. And please be assured that we at the Jesuit Institute continue to find ways of helping and supporting you in your spiritual life. If you'd like to know more, feel free to go to our website, jesuitinstitute.org. .za. God bless you. Welcome to Encountering the Word, our weekly reflection on the Sunday Scriptures. God speaks to us through our own lives and experience, through the church, and importantly, through the words of Scripture. And so we gather to read and reflect on God's Word on this day of resurrection, what the Lord is saying to us here and now, and how best we can respond to what we hear. Let us pray as we gather to listen, reflect, and be together. Teach us to listen, O God, to those nearest to us, our family, our friends, and our co-workers. Teach us to listen, caring God, to those far from us, the whisper of the hopeless, the plea of the forgotten, the cry of the anguished. Teach us to listen, O God, our mother, to ourselves. Help us to be less afraid and to trust the voice inside in the deepest part of ourselves. Teach us to listen, Holy Spirit, for your voice in busyness and in boredom, in certainty and in doubt, in noise and in silence. Teach us, Lord, to listen most especially to your words spoken to us through the Scriptures. Teach us, dear Lord, to listen. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her, and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her, he who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, and he will find her sitting at his gates. To fix one's thoughts on her is perfect understanding, for he who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care. 
because she goes about seeking those worthy of her, and she graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, for you my soul is thirsting, O Lord my God. For For you you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord Lord, my God. God. O God, you are my God. At dawn I seek you. For you my soul is thirsting. For you my flesh is pining like a dry, weary land without water. For you you, my my soul is thirsting, O Lord Lord, my God. God. I have come before you in the sanctuary to behold your strength and your glory. Your loving mercy is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. For you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord, my God. I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. With joyful lips, my mouth shall praise you. For you, my soul is thirsting, O Lord, my God. When I remember you upon my bed, I muse on you through the watches of the night, for you have been my strength. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice. For you my soul is thirsting, O Lord my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We would not have you ignorant, brothers and sisters, concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with all the archangels call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, Comfort one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Watch therefore and be ready. The Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven shall be compared to ten maidens who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, he comes. Come out to meet him. Then all those maidens rose and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, Perhaps there will not be enough for us and for you. Go rather to the dealers 
and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with them to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other maidens came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Near-death experiences can change people. It can make you see things in a new light, make you question and change your priorities. Maybe the experience will give you the courage to truly live the life that you want, not the life that you've fallen into through habit. A few years ago, I was in a car accident. I emerged without a scratch, but it made me wonder about all the things I had left unsaid and undone. I wasn't ready to go and would have died with regret weighing me down. The experience gave me the motivation and the courage to say some of the things that I'd been too afraid to say. No one expects to die. I mean, we all know that we will die, but we usually imagine it to be at a, a distant date, preferably in our sleep, quickly and without pain. Well, I knew a young man who went out for a meal with some friends. He was doing what so many of us South Africans do every weekend, just chilling with friends in a kasi. Well, 39-year-old Tabo was stabbed to death as he tried to break up a fight between a friend and another patron. He left home that morning full of life and dreams and promise, and he returned a few days later in a box. A senseless and unpredictable tragedy which could happen to any one of us. We do not know the day or the hour, and so live this day completely and fully. Love while you can. Say the words that build up, that bring healing and forgiveness. Spend time with those you love, and doing the things you love. The teaching of Jesus is very explicit. We do not know the day or the hour of death, so we must prepare ourselves for it. Living our life in such a way that we are not weighed down with regrets in this life, nor in the life to come. So what does it mean to be ready in the way symbolized by the possession of oil by the wise? The scenario here in this fifth and last speech in Matthew is fully anticipated in his first speech, the Sermon on the Mount. At the end of the Sermon on the Mount, we also hear of people who had prophesied and healed in the name of Jesus, shouting, Lord, Lord, and they hear Jesus say, I never knew you. As in the story of the ten maidens, we hear of wise activity, building on rock, and foolish activity, building on sand. The speech leaves no doubt that wisdom here means hearing the word of Jesus and doing it. And foolishness is failing to do so. Being wise requires more from us than just saying we are Christian. It requires commitment and action. In Luke 13, we hear a, a gospel parallel with people knocking on the door, asking to be let in. The conversation goes something like this. And he will answer, I do not know you or where you come from. And then you will say, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. And he will reply, I do not know you or where you come from, away from me, all you evildoers. Maybe that's true of our own lives too. We're happy to party with Jesus, just as long as he makes no demands of us. But as soon as he gets serious, we keep him at arm's length, away from us, out in the streets of our lives. Wisdom, or being prepared, requires that we give more than lip service to God and allow his teaching to enter our hearts and lives 
and transform us. Having enough oil is like building on rock. That means disciplining one's anger, lust, and vengefulness, as we see in Matthew 5. It means running the household responsibly, as we see in Matthew 24, and investing one's talents fully, as in Matthew 25. It's about doing the corporal works of mercy, spelt out in the climax of the speech, feeding the hungry, quenching the thirsty, receiving the stranger, clothing the naked, visiting the sick and in prison. The parables about the final coming of Christ have nothing to say about how to calculate the end, but they have much to say about living in readiness. The deepest wisdom and fullest readiness it turns us is to live chastely, honestly, non-violently. It's summarized in the Beatitudes and in the teaching of Jesus about avoiding retaliation, loving enemies, being faithful in your relationships, and in meeting our neighbors' basic needs. We do not know the day or the hour, but still we are called to be prepared. Live this day as the blessing it is. Love those around you. Tell your children and your parents that you love them. Make peace while you can. Make what difference you can in the lives of those less fortunate. Put your faith into practice. Be prepared, for we do not know the day or the hour. Let's pray together now as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, you are always calling us to new life, Grace us through your word, the word that we have heard and pondered, to know you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly each and every day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us, friends, for encountering the Word. We look forward to being with you again next week.